Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as, as they've said there, my name is Martin Dunn. I'm the director of the National Ambulance Service for Ireland. Um, and uh, I, he just asked me to come in here today to say a few words. First thing I'd like to say, I suppose, is that it's absolutely marvellous to see the amount of people that actually have turned up here on a Saturday morning to show the commitment that uh, is developing across the country in relation to any responder schemes. And I'm absolutely delighted to see it. Um, the day is well planned out. The itinerary seems to flow very well. So hopefully it'll be a very, very successful day for everyone. And um, I suppose just as a little bit of backdrop, as I said, I'm the director of the National Ambulance Service. Um, we are probably uh, well known to most people at this stage for probably good and some bad as well. Um, what we're going through at the moment from a National Ambulance Service point of view is we're going through a major reconfiguration program over the last couple of years, which means that we're putting very much the patient is centre to everything that we're trying to do and achieve. What we're trying to do is put in procedures and policies and operations that are focused directly on getting care to a patient as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and what we're doing to do that is, as you probably know, we're reconfiguring command and control centres. We're developing a menu, I suppose is the way to put it, of response models and types. We're training our staff to be focused in exactly the right level of care to the patient, the right level of clinician available to be able to respond. We've changed the f we're changing our fleet profile ever so slightly. So um, for many years, I suppose, the problem we had was that the, the white ambulance in my day, or now the big yellow ambulance, as I do keep calling it, um, did everything, just about everything. It was doing a transfer from one hospital to another. It was then doing a transfer back. In the middle of that, it might have to do a road traffic accident and then respond to a collapse and then go back and do the transfer again. Um, the way that life has changed and expectations have changed, the training models have changed, that is just not humanly practical anymore to try and do it. We also have response time targets that we're doing our best, I suppose, the way to put it to achieve in, in, in the environment that we're working in. And due to that, that's why we had to change our models. We've introduced what we call intermediate care services or an intermediate care ambulance, which allows the, I suppose, the inter-hospital transfers, the nursing home transfers, the discharges that have to be done and are as important to us as every other part of our job that we, that we do. They have to be, that's allowing them, I suppose, that type of work to be removed from the emergency ambulances, which is now allowing the emergency ambulances to be freed up to go to emergency calls. Um, we are also implemented uh, response cars in areas, and we've also implemented different types of rapid response vehicles to allow us to achieve that. Um, I know it's probably, it's a big change. We don't probably sell it as, as good as we possibly should from the National Ambulance Service perspective, but that's what we're trying to do, and again, we're trying to get is the patients at the forefront of everything. And to see people like the amount of people that are here today um, to turn up to this very first uh, Respond Conference, uh, National Respond Conference, shows that the people in the, in the communities and other organisations, voluntary, etc., are as dedicated to getting help to a patient as we are, which is great to see. Um, I suppose in relation to, to, your, to responders of any type, the National Ambulance Service is, will be and is developing relationships, networks, a team-based approach to every responder organisation that we possibly can. We, don't, we see it very much, as I said, as a team. Now what we're doing is the call starts in the control centre, the treatment starts on the phone. That allows the dispatchers that we have now, dedicated dispatchers, to be able to dispatch a response to a patient. And in our eyes, organisations like yourselves are absolutely the, nearly the first port of call in relation to some of the series echo or delta calls that we're dealing with. We're going to try and develop that and work with a team. Um, we are, we, our commitment is there, um, along with our partners, say the Irish Heart Foundation, Pre-Hospital Emergency Care Council, to start developing that and working through the future with the community to make sure that local communities who you represent, because taking into account I could be a patient tomorrow, so, or you could be a patient tomorrow, um, the local communities can have some sort of a responder scheme available, that we know the responder scheme is there. We also know that the responder scheme is actually trained and registered the level to do the job that needs to be done in a safe way. Um, and we'll do everything we can in our power from the National Ambulance Service to assist. It can be limited at times because we're all in the same position in relation to finances and everything, but it's, we are going to work as, possible, as hard as we possibly can to ensure that. We will also try and encourage as many responder schemes to let us know where they are, that we can now start putting them onto the new command and control infrastructure that we're building, so we'll be able to do it, the new technology that, that's been developed to allow us to use apps, responders, and, we need, and they can talk back to us. 
We're also very conscious of the fact that there's a safety aspect for everyone, uh, both responding to a call and on a call. So that's why we're trying to make sure that the technology we have and we're building will be able to deal with any of those issues and give people confidence that there's a backup on the way and where the backup is. So as I said to you, that's what we're trying to do. And we're going to work with you as, poss as hard as we possibly can to assure that. Um, I suppose during the course of today as well today, people are, you're going to hear about the statistical benefits that have, is proven that people like yourselves can give to patients. We look, we listen to the technical aspects of it, uh, and it'll be ex probably explained quite clearly how a quick response in the local community has life-saving capacity without doubt. Um, but I also want to remember that you are volunteers, that you are members of your community, and what you do is probably one of the best things you can do for a friend or neighbour, and that's greatly appreciated. And to be honest, which is, you should be very, very proud of yourselves that you are willing to put in the time, the commitment and the training to do that, and it needs to be probably recognised even further. I was on a call last Saturday night in, in my hometown, and um, I do a lot of calls at home, respond from home myself as a responder, in my hometown, and there was two responders there before me with a defibrillator in action, um, and it was great to see the control, the confidence, and the teamwork that was between those responders, the way they were able to interchange between the resuscitation that they were doing. Um, I was able to stand in and help them. We worked as a full team. An ambulance crew arrived after that, and it was a seamless delivery of the patient to hospital. It's great to see it. So from my point of view, and from the National Ambulance Service's point of view, we can't say thanks enough to you. We will try and work better and harder and more team-based witches, and I've given that commitment, and we're going to do that. And even looking here today, I, I was looking around for something to say that uh, I suppose that it might help. And I was looking at a quote that, that um, Mother Teresa said many years ago about, and what she said was, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. And when, when I just look at the amount of people here, we're nearly into a tidal wave, uh, which is just great to see. Um, again, we talk about chain of survival, and that is going back many years, and that, that chain still is, is proven today to be as strong as it was many years ago when it came in the first place. And your point one, two, and three of that chain, to be perfectly honest with you. And if we don't have that point one, two, and three, we don't have a chain. Uh, and again, all I can say to you from that front is thanks very much. Finally, I have to stop talking now anyway, um, um, I have to say again, thanks to the organisers for asking me to come down. Thank everyone here in the room for the time and effort that you give to looking after people in your communities. To the organisers, it's, 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 it's great to see, as I said, it's the first ever. Hope there'll be many more, and hope there'll be many more people at the next ones. Um, I suppose be very proud of what you do. Fly your flag, and let us know if we can do anything we can to help you in the future. And thanks very much for the opportunity, and I wish you very well during the day. Thank you.